Welcome to our front porch. I'm here in West Central Illinois and it's January and um, it's a little chilly to be on a front porch, but our front porch is on the inside of the museum. And uh, it's getting close to Valentine's Day and I wanted to make something special for my sweetheart. And I thought a handcrafted Valentine would be just the ticket. So I've invited our friends, the Victorian ladies, Mrs. Chu and Mrs. Bath, to join me on our front porch today to help us learn how to make a Victorian pocket Valentine. And here they are. Good, yes. good afternoon, ladies. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Oh. Mrs. Bath, Mrs. Chu, how are you both today? Oh, just fine, but it is very cold out there. Oh, it yes. Is, it's, it, is, it is indeed in West Central Illinois, but good thing we've got some warm company, some hot mm -hmm. tea, and we're going to make something special for our sweethearts. Yeah. Well, ladies, are, are we ready to get started on our project? Oh, definitely. Yes, this will be Absolutely. nice. And what are we making? We're going to make a Victorian pocket P valentine. Puzzle pocket. Puzzle pocket. Puzzle, I stand corrected. So I'm going to show you a couple of samples that we have here. So this is what they look like when they're all folded up. Right, ladies? Yes. And, um, you would put something inside. Is that the general idea? Correct. Of a gift? Mm -hmm. If if mm -hmm. the you know gentleman was giving it to a woman, he could put jewelry in there or mm -hmm. gloves or because it has this. It, this is one fold out, Correct. and then mm -hmm. you would put the the stuff in the middle here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Nice. So it, we're going to learn how to fold it, and then we'll take some time to give you some some ways to decorate them. So then they get all folded, sort of back up, and then. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, yes. Right. That so that's really... one. Um, these mm -hmm. are just some samples. Um, mm -hmm. Different things. Even, these even we're back. using an oh, eight yeah. and a, half, a, a, mm -hmm. a 12 by 12 sheet for these that we're showing. But if you only have eight and a half by 11, you can use a smaller one. You'll just get a smaller little pocket one. So that works too. Mm -hmm. So paper is the first thing that you need. We found if it's too thick, it's a little bit harder to fold Correct. and get the creases. So a mm -hmm. construction paper or a Xerox paper is a, is a good thickness. Mm -hmm. Color paper is also very nice if you can find it. You're going to need a glue stick if you want to do some collages. Uh, you need some scissors if you're going to do collages. Markers, pencils, paints, uh, a pencil, and a ruler to get us started in the folding process. And we also have some stencils to, oh, for people idea. like me who have trouble yes. with the artistic mm -hmm. things. Yes. And I can do butterflies and Excellent. birds and hearts. This could be fun. <laughs> okay. So I think now that we have our materials, we've got a square sheet of paper. 12 by 12 is a good size. 8 and a half by 11 works too. Pencils, ladies. Everybody got a pencil okay. and a ruler. And uh, we, can can share we can share that one. We can share. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the first thing is you're going to take your corners of one square and make a diagonal across. Look at this paper in front of you guys. It has blue on one side and oh, another. Oh, how pretty. Nice. I oh, that's really like that because, because it makes it easier. It. Yes, but it's going to be cool. So you're going to do corner to corner and then make a crease. And again, make a good crease and try to be as accurate as you can. You're going to, okay, excellent. You're going to unfold it and then turn it and do it the other way. So you're going to have a cross inside of that 12 by 12 square. I wasn't so accurate. Okay. But it really is still forgiving because yes. once you get it going, it, it yes. falls yeah, into no, place. No fears. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to open it back up again. And the next step is to create fold it's into thirds. So it's nice to sort of make the marks here. And if you divide the 12 by 12 into three, it's going to be four inches. So you're going to take a ruler and a pencil and just mark on your paper just little, I just like to make little tick marks, like at four and on eight, just on one part there. There you go, Miss Chu. There's Thank you. And again, you're going to fold it now in thirds, and you're going to try to find your mark. I'm just kind of hard on my dark paper here. I can find it. There it is. And you're going to fold one into the four-inch mark, increase it. And then you can fold your other one over if you like it that way, or fold it to your mark, whatever works easiest. That's kind of cheating there. Sometimes if it's thick, it doesn't work for it to the fold. Okay. How are we doing, ladies? And it, nice it's piece. good to have a sharp. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. A bone sometimes works if you yes. have one of those. Mm -hmm. yes. So when, when that's done, you should have your cross and then two lines that are thirds. 
Now we're going to do the same thing in the other direction. Now for me, I'm lazy. You can either take a pencil and mark it in the other direction, but you can also find where those two lines, folds, cross, and that's going to give you another four inch. So you could take it and fold it. Miss Chu, did I lose you over there? No. No. Right. Yeah, so right where that intersects there, you would just mm -hmm. fold it. So that would be your third, and that would mm -hmm. be your third. And I am going to mark it. I am and going Or you can mark it. Yep, that and works if you too. need to mm -hmm. mark it, you can. Uh, whatever works. And again. So now your square should look like a cross in the middle, diagonals on the corner, and then the thirds. Kind of almost like a tic tac toe door. Huh? Mm -hmm. You guys doing over there? Oh, this is perfect. perfect. Okay. I, I'm just a little slower yes. because... Yes. Fine, take your time. We are all day in the afternoon sitting on the porch here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so you mm -hmm. kind of got those sides coming up like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now this is an important step that I learned at Displeasure. You're going to flip it over. That's right. Now, this is the most complicated part. So if you get this, you're golden. It's not that hard. What I like to do is to have it in front of me and take always my lower right-hand corner, mm -hmm. and I'm going to move it, or not move it, Line it up with the upper right hand corner of the center square to look something like that. Now don't put fold yet, because this is the part you want to do. Only fold, I kind of come down ah. to that and fold back up to that right. Just that. Oh, this will all make the right. last step much easier. Mm -hmm. Then undo it, turn it 90 degrees, and do the same thing again. Lower right hand corner to the upper corner of the middle square diagonal. Run your finger down and up to the right. Ah. There you go, Miss Chu. How are you doing over there, Miss Beth? I'm doing okay. okay. Turn it 90 degrees. It Lower isn't right that difficult, corner. is it? You're doing very well, Mrs. Chu. <laughs> well, so far. Actually, so far. it is It is not yes. difficult. Well, well that's the beauty about doing it at a tea, doing yes. it together. Yes. yes, it is nice to watch some of you do it. We have enough tea. And we have enough nice cookies yeah, and people mm -hmm. helping and talking. I hope I got that on the camera. Okay, so now we've got those diagonals mm -hmm. in our, our midpoint squares. That's going to help us get that star shape. Flip it back over, ladies. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. Now I'm going to open one of these up just to kind of show you because what this is the kind of the trickiest part, and sometimes it helps to have another set of hands. Mm -hmm. Another reason to have friends, yes. friends make these together. So what I have found is you want to get these sort of square shape like this, like a boat, and you're going to kind of push it into fold. So that's why it sometimes helps to have other hands. So let's do that together. I just want to okay. show you where we're going. We want to get to this kind of a shape next. And I just so, did it fast. <laughs> I like to take, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 you're good. Take my four corners. Mm -hmm. And again, you're kind of making a box. Mm -hmm. Yes, there mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you can just make sure the others are kind of and folded. Kind of and then you're almost just letting it there. spin in. Because the, mm -hmm. there we go. And then you should have that kind then of a star ah. Look at that. I'm loving this two-sided paper. Yes. That is lovely. You got it there? And then, yeah, give it a good press down. Well, and I found that, that if you turn it over then and then... Oh, the other it. side? Um, it Get helps. A good crease. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It helps later on. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? It does look like a beautiful star. Yeah, it does. doesn't it look nice? How are you doing there, Ms. Chu? I'm getting, I am getting there. I think I had a problem with one of my creases, but it'll be fine. Okay. Well, okay. This paper is also the thicker paper. This, this is, is like thick. a drawing paper. Yeah, so this you can is see thicker. the difference of, of when yes. it's a little thicker. So, okay. So the last step to get it to this sort of folded shape here is you're just going to take one corner and push it up and then the next one and then the next one you see where we're going and i actually like find this. it easier that this if one. i spin it around and it's so i'm getting mm -hmm. it yeah. and then that last one kind of gets tucked in to that side there you see how it's going to get tucked in like that and that's going to hold it closed there you go. So that kind of helps it to actually to pop it up like that. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Oh, look at that. And then you tuck it. Now you tuck yeah, it you here. Yes. All right. Yay. Like an envelope. Yes. Oh, I'm so pleased. Yeah. There we go. Four hands are better. I've only had a year to practice it. <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's nice. So we've got 
Yeah. We each have one oh. that's very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Good work, ladies. So um, I think it's time for some tea. Oh, oh tea <laughs> would be lovely. We just did a lot of work here. So um, I, um, when I start thinking about these, sometimes I choose like a color pattern or a way to do that. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Stewart. So like maybe with this blue, the complement of blues is yellows and oranges. Or if you want to make it more like water colors or cool colors, you could do greens and blues on this. You know, you've got a lovely purple there. That would be pretty with different things. You can pass that Should over there. Put so that I'll over spill here? that. If you put that close to me. Uh, yes, well, we'll put it back here. Well, thank you for that. And we do have cookies. Oh, oh look at the candy walnuts. Oh, those are... Are these um, typical uh, Victorian yes. parlor treats? Mm -hmm. it, they were actually pecan pralines. They mm -hmm. would have been very typical. And, and cookies, different types of cookies. Um, just something to nibble on because let's be honest, when you're doing something like this, it's so much fun to be sipping tea and having something to nibble on and helping each other with mm -hmm. decorating because I can fold these, but I, I don't have the artistic sense. <laughs> like you some of get these. ideas from your, your friends. Correct. But I also think, and you know, the beauty of a handmade gift is that it comes from the talents that you have and the expression that you want to send, yes. that message you want to send to the person you're giving it to. And that's, you know, something that you can do. Anybody yes. can do. Yeah. And right? the goal is for them not to be perfect. It's, well, because there is no one way really. to do it. No. So um, let me grab some materials that I think we can use. I like collage a lot. Um, what I mean by that is, if I'm not mistaken, the Victorians kind of used what they had around the house. Am oh, I very right? much correct. So. They would save things. They would save foil. They would save uh, from magazines or newspapers, mm -hmm. cut out things. Yeah. Um, so what we did was we went and found some types of Victorian area advertisements and mm -hmm. stuff on Google and then we just printed them out and then we can, you can cut and paste these in. That's where the glue sticks come mm. in really handy. Um, and then what else did they use? Like fabrics or anything? Or? Fabrics, but also the paper doilies, oh, okay. the lace doilies were out already. They, yes, were, they, were, they were done in the you know 1830s and mm -hmm. then you had um, colored paper and that came out that was very vibrant. Mm -hmm. Now that's if you were a little wealthier and you okay. could afford to buy yes. it. Otherwise, yeah. yes, they would use scraps of uh, clothing, ribbons, anything. Well, there were a lot of magazines, probably not like we have today, the glossy magazines, but were there like magazines? Oh, definitely. oh definitely. definitely. You, you had the news. fashion magazines, you had the newspapers, and the newspapers would have the advertisements, okay. and so you mm -hmm. could cut things out and right. paste and make a collage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think all that stuff yeah. works really well. And, Just um, walk through your house. Yeah, hand me that one for a second. I want to show will. you like this. And thing. that's beautiful with I the love lines you know what and this everything. Is? This is this blue is the inside of a, an envelope. Oh, And I really? like the color, so sometimes what you get in you know, your junk mail, this is from a magazine. Um, so yeah, I, just be aware. This is just brown paper from a brown mm -hmm. paper bag. Mm. Um, and then also these were things from an old book that I found at a, a rummage sale, but I liked the way they were mm -hmm. drawn. Same thing I think with the inside. Look at these chickens. <laughs> oh my. They're just so sweet, but they were from that, this old book I found. Oh, I that. And that's that envelope again. Mm -hmm. So anyway, find, look around and you can see this one has like a blue and pinkish kind of and black and white kind of feel. This one is more colored pencil uh, with some mm -hmm. writing. So maybe think of like, I don't know what I'm feeling today, but we also... Well, you would also then maybe adapt it to whoever you were giving it to. Yes. I, I once saw one that I think the, the person, they were interested in music or singing, and they had used um, old hymns, cut oh, out certain oh, things, that, and that put them in and around, music. and yeah, sheet music, nice. and it was very nice. Or draw something yourself. You don't have to be an artist, no. but that's very personal. 
So we also just cut them from cutting this paper down. We had extra sheets and we cut them into the four by four squares. That's wow, look at that, you guys. Ooh, oh, that's, that's beautiful. I, I that. like that. Well, I will need something for my mm -hmm. purple. But you know what? This, yes, this well, mine does. is well, very. Like, grab some of these. Take, look at there's some gold mm. leftovers Ooh, in here, I too. Need so. Okay, um, I need gold. I want to see what the green looks like on this. I'm wondering like, if there's just that pop of orange. Now, look at, I'm also kind of fond of how subtle that is. That might be kind of nice on the inside. So maybe on the, oh, maybe it should be the other way around. Maybe that hot, hot is like you open it up like it's cool, cool, cool colors. And then when you open it up in the middle, it's like, bam. No? <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> it's, like, okay, whatever. You are the artistic person. Do we need another glue stick? That oh, one? Got one. Okay. Oh, you got it open. You got a glue mm -hmm. stick? I okay. That's why we have friends. I could not do the glue stick. Hey, did they have glue in the late 1800s? Oh, they definitely. May. Well, oh, commercial made? glue was expensive and not always available, so they they made their own glue. Out of what? Well, the simplest one was the flour and flour water. Flour and water. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember my mother making many, mixing it up in a teacup, and it was fast and it was inexpensive. And you could have as much as you wanted. They would make all sorts it, of things. It would dry pretty quickly? It would dry fairly quickly. Okay. But that's what you want with, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's the beauty of the glue sticks, isn't it? So I wonder if I should put orange. Um, and where did this, is the Valentine, does that come out of the Victorian era? Or oh, that was much, much that earlier. Was, oh, was it? There. Okay. And, um, you know, it was it was designed more, or it was uh, intended more for adults. That was a courtship thing. Okay. Uh, young men would yes. would yeah. go and uh, send love poems and whatnot to their sweethearts and vice versa. And in fact, I was reading something where uh, the 18th century, you could actually buy a book for young men if they could, didn't feel they were poetic enough, they could have this book of all these romantic verses and copy it down by hand and yes. give it to their love. Like a scenario the bird has <laughs> But So was it part of the courtship was to be able to write poetry? Like, you know what I'm saying? Was oh, yes. Considered, um, and, and that's where you get the language of flowers and oh. whatnot and, and certain animals represent things and doves and swinging birds oh which ones the flowers what, or the birds what do you mean like flowers well flowers meanings? flowers and plants and herbs just had meanings um you could send all sorts of messages oh may i have some colored uh pencils please sure you got them there to spill your tea um yes. but they would you know, you could send a message with a bouquet and indicating... Not uh, like a written message. Oh, no. No, but no, each, just by each flower. The flower and the color would symbolize something. And originally, the most popular um, flower for Valentine's Day was the violet. Oh, violets. Violets. Yes. It was modesty and everything else. Later on, it became roses. But, uh, so, and, and under Queen Victoria, her favorite flower was the orange blossom. Was it not <laughs> appropriate just to say those things? Or, like, or was that just part of the courtship in the way people... It was part of the courtship. And it was, it was more it really romantic. Was. It was different. Um, really not different from today where we want, even though someone may say, I love you or I am attracted to you, mm -hmm. we really want... A different way of it being expressed, and um, Ooh, oops, oops, there we go, <laughs> there we go. So, but well, and but to say it with flowers, uh, if if the uh, the person receiving, if the young lady receiving the flowers, was not entirely happy about the attention. It's much easier to uh, send it in a less direct sense than Correct. to actually say it. So all of this was very, 
should I say orchestrated? Oh. Well, even with the um, puzzle purses valentines that we're making, uh, there was a tradition that if a young man really wanted to have start a serious courtship with a young lady, mm -hmm. he would make a larger oh, pocket yes. puzzle mm -hmm. and put a pair of gloves in there and give it to his intended. And if she accepted his, uh, his attentions mm -hmm. and wanted to reciprocate and you know get a little more serious, the next time she went out and saw him, she would wear that wear pair of gloves. Oh, yes. So it's a signal? It was a signal. Yes. And it, we don't wear much gloves while well, we wear gloves here now in the winter because it's cold. But were gloves an important part of a woman's ensemble? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. A lady did not go out in public without with her hands uncovered. That was the norm. And definitely, even if you were somebody who, uh, a mother with many children or whatnot, when you went to church, yes. when you went to a social gathering, you wore gloves. You always, yes. So therefore they carry certain symbols, it sounds like. Yes, yes. correct. Interesting. Um, were there other parts of the Valentine celebration or holiday that well, was Mrs. common? Mrs. Bath, it's, it's not what we're doing today, but it was a part of the Vinegar Valentines. Oh. What's that? Uh -huh. Well, uh, Vinegar Valentines were sent anonymously. You never indicated mm -hmm. who the sender was. But let's say I was a, a young man um, sent me a pair of gloves or was trying to get my attention and mm -hmm. I ignored him. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, I spurred him, rejected his okay. attentions, and he was angry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he would send what was known as a vinegar valentine and it would have a it would have um, maybe a well a caricature picture yes uh, not very very nasty but then a verse uh, that would uh, be mocking of the of the person who was receiving it it was a way of letting your intentions known but <laughs> and it was they were for men and women oh yes. so you could send it to a man who uh, in fact, I saw one where obviously it was a, a man who wanted a wife, just any wife. Oh, yes. And uh, it, it shows him on the bank um, with this silly grin, and he's got a fishing pole with a heart at the end trying to get yes. women who are the fish. And he doesn't really care about them. And the verse underneath is explaining that, you know, uh, you... you you, women know the difference between true love and attraction and just somebody who's... They, they, yes, they could correct. Be, they could be very... Well, they were called vinegar valentines. Acidity. And yes. they were uh, very elaborate. Very detailed, very elaborate. May I have the basket yes. of the those? Some yes. In there. Um, you know what else you could do is like say you had. I think a lot of us in this time period have like school photos or other photos. Oh ah, yeah. Oh, that would be lovely. You could put, um, put photos inside, right? Um, we got, everything's on our phone these days, so you might have to print it out, but. No, that would be another way to personalize it. Oh, you put some birds on there. Yeah, just, oh, look at that. Oh, I, I love see, these stencils. Look at how nice. Yeah, I love these stencils. Oh. Well, you these make, are such fun. It makes it easy, too. Well, I was, and it makes it easy, and I love to color. Yeah, and you could put right verses, too, around. So mm -hmm. um, I guess, yeah, like, I just wanted to, like, take this. So if you notice how I've got this orange here, but if you open it up, you can oh, see wow. on the back. Oh my! Like, oh, how So you might pretty. want to go back and forth before you glue it on because on one, if you put mm -hmm. it on this side, it wouldn't show up in here, right? It would be no. So oh, like, that's so. Um, so doing a little bit of just testing and folding and unfolding and finding how they interact um, is good. So. Well, I also 
found out that, um, you know, again, the color red and a few other things uh, became more set during the later part of the Victorian period. Yes. And um, with the candy, we're so used to uh, assuming the Valentine's Day candy is going to come into a heart-shaped box. Mm -hmm. But that didn't come out until around 1861. It was Canberry. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh they, yes, Cadbury. Cadbury was. came out, and they mm -hmm. came out with what they called fancy boxes, and they were pur purposely made in the shape of hearts, and candy was in there, but the intent was that you save the box, okay. and you would put your valentines and oh. your love letters in mm -hmm. there. Sure, yeah. was, sure. I love that idea. Huh, so that's pretty early on that that kind of came, came around. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. in the United States, the first... Um, manufactured valentine was done by a woman by the name of Esther Hol uh, oh, Holland yeah. oh, and mm -hmm. her father was a owned a stationery store mm -hmm. um, she had shown it she uh, he got, he had an international supplier who sent Esther as a sample an English valentine and she was so taken with it that she asked her father if she could use the scraps from the shop and make her own valentine. Oh. But she was also an industrious woman. Okay. She um, asked young ladies from the nearby women's colleges uh -huh. to do the decorating. She, oh. uh, Esther had her brother go out and take subscriptions, so they were paid in advance. And these valentines could cost anywhere from five to ten dollars a piece. And that was expensive. That was a, that was a more than a week's Oh, salary. That, that a person was making less than a dollar a day. Yes. So it was very expensive. Huh. He had, he was able to raise 5,000 subscriptions oh in gosh. 1847, the first year oh she my. did it. So she got the ladies from the women's colleges during their spare time, and they would earn a little extra money. They were going around and making the valentines, all mm -hmm. sorts of elaborate ones, and they came in boxes. Huh. And um, then it took off, plus the postal system, I mean. Yes, right? Yes. That, yeah. that really helped when it was uh, uh, inexpensive to go and send cards and... Well, that you actually could, right? Yes. I mean, it's a, a system that actually allowed you to get it to somebody on the other side of the state, or, yes. right? Yes, correct. Country. Very interesting how these things sort of take hold, right? Yes. Kind of, kind of put into a tradition, right? Well, and it, again, uh, it definitely helped if you had loved ones farther away and we were an expanding country and, you know, it was expensive to get on a train, um, to do a telegraph mm -hmm. or anything else and letter writing and a, again if this were a um, uh, some of these valentines every inch would be written in fact I, I, I saw one where as you're opening it okay. um, you know every free space it was a continual letter or love poem and mm -hmm. it went around and around and when you opened up the first thing it continued and when you opened the layer and it was just filled with with um, expressions of love and interest I'm like, oh my <laughs> i've seen that like with letters from that era that people just oh look at how nice that looks oh how pretty yes, yes. i've got yeah. a nice little blue and yeah, that all kind of yes but, but was it because I mean, was that just, I guess I've seen letters that people write and they do mm -hmm. that. They write in the margins and all over. Is it because paper was expensive or that's what I've kind of heard. Is that true? Uh oh, she's got, in, she's, she's in, <laughs> I asked her In some cases, that. yes, expensive. And even if it wasn't expensive necessarily, it was scarce. Okay. So you made every little shred of paper count. Yes. And and at one time, the postal system wasn't as good as it is now, so you wanted to write as uh, much as possible. And there was, I think, if I am correct, um, there was one charge 
poor item. And I think they also charge you by the distance, not by the weight. Okay. So if you had a sheet of paper, you were going to make you the make best the use of it. You, yes. And I actually saw one, and this was during the Civil War, where the person, they wrote on their sheet of paper, and then they turned it upside down, and in the spaces between their first, mm -hmm. they wrote it again, mm -hmm. and then they it's its own puzzle, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hmm. Hmm. Once uh, Victorians were married, was this, do you know if this was something they continued to, to do, this sort of show of affection, or did that kind of change? Oh, them? no, they, they continued doing it. In fact, um, that's actually how they, they started doing what is referred to as a Cupid's Tea, because you'd invite somebody would invite her women friends mm -hmm. into the sitting room or the kitchen and you would sit around, make valentines, have some tea, have some cookies and whatnot. And uh, again, to husbands, um, to parents, to other people. And they would just, it was a social gathering, okay. almost like a quilting bee, if you want oh, to yes. say, in their own little way. Sure. Yeah, well, your yes, and your materials don't always have to be paper. You can use yeah. bits of fabric or yarn or ribbon. Yeah. Correct. There, look at that. That's, that goes with my silver pencil. Thing. Well, you could even have, if you had um, a jar of buttons, old buttons. Oh, that would you be could wonderful. You could do buttons on there mm -hmm. and everything else. I think I could spend the afternoon doing this, but I'm wondering if we should wrap it up, ladies. Oh, Probably. Okay. I, I suppose we would have. Uh, yes. How did yours turn out? Let me see. Well, I, oh, I'm some, slow, I like but I just, I've got the pink and almost like a, a brown. Oh, and the there you there, go. So mm -hmm. But I like your stencils. Well, I was having too much fun with the stencils. Okay, I only, I, yes. Mm -hmm. So when you fold it together, there's a mm -hmm. heart. Oh, this is nice, the alternative, and then mm -hmm. fold it. Uh oh, am I going to get it right? Yep, yep, and then there's a heart. That's, oh, that's lovely. All right. Thank you. Thing. Thank you. Now, yes. that one, if you open it up, it is just white because I haven't gotten that far. Okay. I was having too much fun oh, with the stencils. <laughs> Those are really precious on there. That's it. Again, easy way to do it if you easy don't and know fun. how to do it. Yes. And yeah, and then mm -hmm. you just keep. And this and one I, is you a, keep. A, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, just oh, that's keep going. Nice. And, oh, yes. That's another one. They're all different, right? Yes. Mine's real bold. Mm -hmm. Yours is really yes. sketchy and, and stuff. So um, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see if you if you make any of these. Just hashtag at our front porch, you know, and, and we'll we'll see how you're doing out there and sharing your Victorian Valentines. So. Um, this has been lovely, ladies. This has been so much fun. Yes, it has Such been fun. Such a with you. Perfect way on a cold afternoon. Although, you know, I could be here longer, but it is getting light, and we have things light. to do. We have things to do, yes. Yes. Dark yes. Night. yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And this is a wonderful activity for the, you know, winter months, especially in February, where it just seems oh, so nice. cold and dark. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Well, these are going to be a little bright spot in people's, yes. Yes. people's day. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, we've got a couple of weeks to Valentine. We've got plenty of time. So we look forward to uh, seeing what you all create. And I can't wait to see the response when we give these to our sweet Oh, partners. yes. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I'll have to make several mm -hmm. for family members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again on our front porch. And ladies, we'll, we'll hopefully have you visit us again. I will enjoy Oh, oh please, it's our pleasure. Please, it's our, it is our It's pleasure. always fun always coming fun. here. Thank you very thank much. You. And we'll see you next time on our front porch. Bye-bye. Goodbye.